Hello, and welcome to Communicore Weekly. I'm George. And I'm Jeff. I hope we never lose sight of one thing, that it was all started by a... rabbit? It's time for Disney History! In 1927, shortly after his Alice comedies, Walt Disney contracted with Carl Lamel, head of Universal Studios, to produce new cartoon series for Charles Mintz and George Winkler called Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. After an unsuccessful first attempt called Poor Papa, Walt and Ub Iwerks produced Trolley Troubles, which proved to be a great launching pad for the series. The team went on to produce a total of 26 Oswald shorts for Universal. The series was a huge success, and both parties knew it. It even produced the first Disney merchandise, including a stencil set, a candy bar, and a push-pin button. In 1928, Disney went to Mintz to ask for a bigger budget. Mintz instead demanded that Disney take a 20% budget cut and told Walt that he didn't own the rights to the character. Universal did. This came as quite a surprise to Disney. Mintz had also began to hire some of Walt's animators in case he had to continue the series without Walt himself. Walt knew he couldn't produce quality cartoons with a severe budget cut, and he also didn't want to work under such a sneaky tyrant as Charles Mintz. You know, just an interesting side note, it's been speculated that in Pixar's Up, the bad guy, Charles Muntz, was named after Charles Mintz. Just, you know, did you know, interesting fact. I had thought about that, uh, but Walt left Universal and established his own studio, taking along with him Of Iwerks and Les Clark, two of the few animators he had left who remained loyal to his vision. It was around this time, as the story goes, that Walt took a train back to California from New York and during that trip came up with an idea for a cartoon mouse. The rest you probably know, or I hope you know. But that wasn't the end of Oswald. Mint shortly opened his own studio and continued to produce Oswald cartoons, but his animation skills were not on par with those of Walt Disney, despite having been many of uh, Walt's animators on the payroll. Universal boss Carl Lamel wasn't happy with the new Oswald cartoons and shortly fired Mintz. Yay! Yay! He decided to produce future Oswald cartoons on the studio a lot and offered Walter Lance, best known later for Woody Woodpecker, offered him the job. Lance, an honorable guy, asked for Disney's blessing. And now that the Mickey Mouse shorts were becoming popular, Walt didn't have a problem with the other Walt taking over Oswald. The two Walts even became good friends. Lance produced 142 of Oswald's 194 short films. During that time, he gradually changed Oswald into a different character. He gave the character white gloves, shoes, a shirt, and other things to set him apart from Disney's version. By 1935, Oswald had emerged as a realistic looking rabbit with white fur replacing his old black fur. Oswald now looked less like a cartoon and more like an actual rabbit. Lance also gave Oswald a voice. Many people voiced the role over the years, including animator Bill Nolan, actor Mickey Rooney, and even Lance himself. June Foray provided the voice of Oswald for his final short, The Egg Cracker Suite. Other than a few cameo appearances over the years, that short was the end of Oswald's screen career. Oswald continued to appear in comic books during this, his time at Universal, and in a series of one-page features in DC Comics 1935 comic, New Fun. Eventually, Oswald made it into Dell Comics' New Funnies, where in 1948 he adopted two bunnies, Floyd and Lloyd. Soon, however, Oswald faded even from the comics, except for those produced overseas and in Mexico, where Oswald's adventures continued well into the 1970s. In 2006, Disney CEO Bob Iger wanted to bring Oswald back into the fold. So, Disney struck a deal with NBC Universal in exchange for sportscaster Al Michaels, who wanted to join his former broadcast partner John Madden on Sunday Night Football. NBC would return to Disney some minor assets that included the rights to Oswald and Walt's original 26 Oswald cartoons. However, despite being home again, Oswald wasn't thrust immediately back into the spotlight. Instead, Disney slowly introduced him again with merchandise such as shirts and figures and with a DVD set of his original cartoons. Oswald's big comeback was in late 2010 when he appeared as a main character in the Epic Mickey video game. This was a fantastic way to reintroduce Oswald to a modern audience, especially because it used a bit of Disney history to make it happen. Based on the success of Epic Mickey, I'm sure we'll see more of Oswald in the future. 
nerd. He's a nerd. He's a nerd. He's a geek. He's a geek. But we all like to hear him speak. So listen up to the words from his speech. Ah. It's George's book of the week. The Art of Brave by Jenny LaRue was recently published by Chronicle Books. Chronicle has a rich history of publishing eye-popping art books about the creation of animated films. Jenny is well known for her animation history blog, The Blackwing Diaries, but she has also been an artist at Warner Brothers, Amblimation, Turner, Disney, and DreamWorks. And like most art of books, Jenny follows a standard format looking at the origins of the film's art and story and how the film evolved into what we see on the screen. What always surprises me is how long these films take. The first inklings of Brave were actually doodled in 2005, when story artists, concept artists, and other Pixarians started working on the film and hashing out ideas. Jenny chronicles the research trip to Scotland that the artist took, which includes pictures of the crew and the inspiration for the background, the weather, and the fauna. The majority of the book does look at the development of the characters, especially Merida and her family. We learn about the journey of the characters, as well as the journey of the artist that created the characters. There are astounding images of concept artwork with stunning images on almost every page. Jenny also chose to include a lot of the digital storyboards and a color script which looks at the lighting, color, weather, and the time of day of the film. Since I reviewed this book before seeing the film, I assume there are a few spoilers, but I didn't see anything that made me less excited about the film. If nothing else, I am convinced that this is going to be the most beautiful and dramatic story that Pixar has ever told. I am really excited about seeing this film when it premieres. It looks like it's a film that is going to be spectacular on so many levels. Well, the book is great too. And if you have a thing for Disney, Pixar animation, then you need to add this book to your collection. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It's a debate. Who's gone? When many folks go to the Disney theme parks, they always stop at Adventureland to get a delightfully tasty treat that has been around for years. That's right, I'm talking about the Dole Whip, the delicious pineapple snack that has been a Disney staple for years now. It's totally my Disney thing, and I often, fi I often find myself asking, what is better than a Dole Whip? And clearly, the answer is nothing. Nothing is better than a Dole Whip. But recently, a cult of citrus has sprung up at Walt Disney World, trying to usurp the pineapple morsel from its throne. And I like that it's back, but the citrus swirl has no place as the king of all snacks. Sorry about it, George. That's alright, I think we've got some great reasons, and uh, the first one, in my argument, is uh, the citrus swirl is more buoyant and can be used as a flotation device on the Jungle Cruise. Yeah, but if you have a good skipper, you're not going to need a flotation yeah. device. But that's fine, right. because Dole Whips are actually 68th in line for the presidency in case of an emergency. Oh, that's a good one, that's a good one. Well. Citrus swirls have been used to simulate quicksand in survival training camps. You know, if, if anything, that should probably be an argument against a citrus oh. swirl. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, still, they're still better. Fine, fine. Well, right. Dole Whips can be used to power electrical equipment for up to 36 hours in a zombie apocalypse, which is going to happen, clearly. Ah, uh, well, check this out. I'm going to have to whisper this one. Citrus swirls have a secret ingredient. Four ounces of awesome that's a good one Ooh, yeah. we have to keep the one to ourselves but yeah dole whips they have over 20 feature film credits on imdb.com that's a lot wow that's pretty impressive but but no oscar <clears throat> the citrus swirl recipe was included on the gold record sent out on Voyager 1 in the 1970s. Oh, that's an impressive one. That's, that's You know what? That's, that's good. Th this is the one, though. This is the one that's going to beat everything else out. I'm Dole listening. Whips, the Dole Whip, topped Rick Astley's Never Gonna <gasps> Give You Up on the Pop Charts in the UK and stayed there for 26 years. Wow. And I guess we will never know the answer to what is better than a Dole Whip. It's nothing. No nothing's better than a Dole Whip. Sometimes you might see it, sometimes you don't. Hey, look, what's that? It's a five-legged goat. <laughs> now, you know, story is king with Disney, right, Jeff? It's good to be the king. It is. Uh, well, 
For years, the building to the left of City Hall at the Magic Kingdom was known as the Gallery. It was where you went for package pickup. Recently, Disney rethemed the Gallery to be the Chamber of Commerce for Main Street USA. And as a Chamber of Commerce, their responsibility is to promote their members. Now, if you take a moment and look around the chamber, you'll see drawings of some of the businesses on Main Street, like the Chapeau, Casey's Corner, and the Plaza Ice Cream Parlor. I wonder how much they charge their members. <laughs> I bet it's not $200. We get a lot of comments about how fantastic the music is on Communicore Weekly. I, I always assumed people would think that we're such charming and effusive hosts that they love us. But anyways, a little shout out to Steve Willard and Andrew Taylor from Amplify this music. They write, record, and produce all the music that you hear on this show. And, you know, all the music is really awesome. I mean, we like getting emails about ourselves, but it's also cool that people email us about uh, the music as well, because it is great stuff. But anyway, as you guys know already, we're doing a super awesome event at Epcot for the Epcot's 30th anniversary. MyShot.com slash store for more information. Anyway, we wanted to do something to help promote the event, and we asked uh, Steve and Andy to create a movie trailer for us. We didn't give them any ideas. We just said we wanted to be, like, awesome and a huge summer tentpole-like movie trailer, and they came up with this little gem, which I am editing a video for, but we just want you guys to hear the audio because it's so awesome, and I think you'll really enjoy it. Well, we're waiting on the callback from Scarlett Johansson, right? Yes. Once the restraining order goes away, she will call us back. We're not gonna make it! There's not enough time! It's okay. I have a fast pass. From MiceChat.com and the creators of Communicore Weekly. Get down! Relax. It's just popcorn. Join us Saturday, September 29th for a special live taping of Communicore Weekly to celebrate Epcot's 30th anniversary. Check micechat.com backslash store for details. It's in the Norway Pavilion! Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to leave us a comment and rate us on iTunes. You can always email us at communicoreweekly at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash communicoreweekly. And follow both of us on Twitter at Imagineerding and at Jeff Heimbuck. I'm George. And I'm Jeff. And we're from Mice Chat. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week on Communicore Weekly. Rice cooker. <laughs>